ladies and gentlemen, here she is, a 2004 Dodge Ram 2500 dually conversion uh, 06 front end swap. So tonight's video, I'm going to be showing you guys what you have to do to a 12 valve to run this thing for hot shot. We're going to be doing a couple of modifications to it. You guys can see we did put a 12 valve Cummins in a 2004 truck. So with that being said, since this one's a 2004, um, if you wanted to use a, a 12 valve Cummins for the non-CDL hot shot work, um, it seems to be the most reliable motor that you can really get on the market, but unfortunately it's such an older truck and they're super underpowered. So tonight's video I'm going to be showing you how to up the power on one of these things and you guys can see already I want to keep as many factory parts as possible so we have a 4th gen HE351 VE turbo. Um, we're about to make a spring setup for the turbo. Um, to hold it in the open position and then we're going to use a choke cable on the exhaust uh, for the exhaust brake which we do have set up here let me show you guys in here we kind of have a choke cable set up here this is all temporary I got to get uh, here's the wiring for the fuel pump so I got to get this all wrapped nice and not you know crappy but uh, that'll probably be for another video but like I said 2004 Dodge Ram 2500 3500 rear end 2006 front end, 96 P-pump motor, if you could focus. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we, this motor is out of a 96, so that's what we're gonna be showing you today. I've got the new uh, fuel relief valve in there and a f new fuel pump on the side of the block. We are also running the factory fuel pump in the back of the truck. So with that being said, let's just skip over everything and I will show you uh, what you need to do to take this thing apart. Alright, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take off this intake horn here so you probably don't need to but there's it just makes it definitely a lot easier. Um, there's a uh, a safety bolt in there or a rivet as you would say. Um, I will show you guys that after I get this intake horn off. It's a lot it's it's kind of a pain to get in there and get it with this thing in the way so yeah I definitely want to get this thing out of the way. All right, so once you get that horn off, I've got one broken bolt in mine on the back there. Um, so other than that, once you get that off, you guys will see that there is, you guys will see that there is a rivet in there, tamper-proof screw, whatever you want to call it. What you do is you take a flathead screwdriver, a chisel or something, you put it into the top of it as center as possible, and you beat the living hell out of it with a hammer. Now you're not, I don't know, If you're, you're turning your pump up. This is the way to do it. So once you get it, you guys can see, now you can kind of spin it. All right, so you guys can see there is another screw back here, yada, yada. Yeah, it's a square screw, or a, uh, yeah, square. Flathead, so you can do that, and then the other two should just be regular bolts. So if you take all four of them out, the AFC housing will lift up. And you will be able to pull, yeah, your, your AFC housing will lift off, so you'll be able to pull it off. So. Alright, so you're also going to need to get this off, which is a 13 on mine. It's probably a little bit smaller, there was a little bit of play, but I used a 13 and it came off just fine. So here's your housing. There's going to be some mods that we're going to be doing to this. So I will set that aside and deal with that later. Um, the other thing is there is your fuel plate down there. So you're going to want to take out those two, uh, two flathead screws. Do not drop them in the pump. You'll be pulling a pump. So get that off, pull that out, and then I will show you guys how to grind down your fuel plate to be a zero plate. And then you're going to want to slide it all the way to the front. Alright guys, so here is your fuel plate, and you guys can see there's a little angle down here. So what you're going to want to do is, you, if it'll focus, so there's that little lip there. You're going to want to grind this thing all the way flat. So I'm going to grab a piece of tape and uh, get all that taken care of, and then throw it back in. I do not recommend taking these out, unfortunately, because they did say that you're, uh, the top of the housing, or I'll show you. 
this piece here will actually get stuck in there somehow when it's trying to come up. I don't understand how, but it just says that it can and you'll cost yourself a pump. So according to the internet, don't throw the fuel plate out. All right, so I'm not gonna touch the thing, but you get the point. We got a flat plate there. I'm not touching it, that thing is hot. So uh, the next thing we're gonna step into is uh, tearing this AFC housing apart. I'm gonna start working on this thing. Uh, you guys can see there's an o-ring in the bottom of that too not like this one's pretty crushed down so hopefully it doesn't leak anything but um i think i think that's actually really all we have to do down in there so all right so i'm having some problems with that screw right there but so you guys have here is where's your tamper proof there's your tamper proof right there It'll focus, there it goes. For, it was in this corner, so this will come off now. Just try not to rip the damn thing, but you get the point. So here is all of this. Now we're gonna take this bolt off here and flip this to the other side. So I will show you guys that in a minute. All right, so once you get all that done, you guys see we got that all torqued down. I'm still fighting with this one. So we're gonna go to the next thing. We're gonna go to the star wheel. We're gonna turn that about 50 clicks towards the engine. So I will get this thing off quick and show you what's going on. All right, you guys can see there's a little wheel in there. I turned it about 50 clicks because I kind of lost count on if, certain. I might be off by like three. Um, you go to click it and you think it did or it didn't so I went 50 that I saw so I could be like in, I'm in between 50 and 60 clicks there so but you get the point we'll put this here's the screw we'll put that all back on so and then I got to fight with that screw down there all right so once you get this cover off here you guys can see there is a, a nut and then you put your allen in there so basically what you're gonna do is you're going to adjust this in until that little guy right there starts moving. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, so install is the reverse of taken out. So this will go in there, we're gonna push it, we're gonna slide it the whole way back. Make sure you don't drop your screw in there. I should not be doing this while I'm filming, but hey, it's worth the risk for the shot, right? There it is, I'm trying to find the hole and I can't find it. You know, I really didn't think from day one that I was gonna do this. I was gonna kind of just leave it alone, but after towing with this small amount of horsepower, really don't want to tow with it anymore. Especially with this big turbo. So I'm gonna set all that up down in there. You guys can kind of see what I'm working on. I'm gonna have to snug these down pretty damn good. So I'll get back to you in a minute. All right, so we are back in the shop with the 12 valve after driving it all day. I didn't really get any clips of driving it, but I'll tell you what, the power difference is definitely noticeable. So we picked up 
a lot of horsepower. Um, everything's back together and everything. Um, I just got to check the oil here in a minute. Other than that, and last night I took it out to just just to drive it. It seemed like it was smoking a lot last night just because it was black, like pitch dark outside. So I thought it was smoking a lot more, and I drove it today, and I really didn't give it too much throttle, but it does smoke if you want it to. But if you're just driving empty, um, it's not really all that bad. So I am going to get some AFC Live for the truck here at some point, probably going to be several months down the road. We did pick up a tailgate tonight, so that, there is that. Um, with that being said, this is definitely something I would recommend um, on the truck. Just because if you have a 12 valve, obviously you are well under power. This motor made about 180 horsepower on this. Um, in the, the the motor itself made 180 horsepower, so it, it's probably making 135, 130 to the tire, um, 400 foot pounds of torque, give or take. So now we should be well into the 600 foot pounds of torque mark and a lot more horsepower. So there is that. So you guys can see really it's not all that smoky when you're accelerating so when I'm rowing through the gears and everything you can actually drive this thing pretty normally like I'm looking back there and the only way it really smokes now it seemed like it smoked a lot more when it was dark so I mean the clouds just kind of seem thicker but um, at this point like just driving normally I'm gonna do an acceleration shot and hopefully you guys can see the exhaust back there and, uh, I'm just gonna row through the gears Yeah, like right now, just accelerating normally. It's really not smoking. Just rowing through the gears. Of course, right up here is the school zone, so now we got to drop down to 15. But you guys can see it back there. Alright, guys. So that is going to do it for the video. Obviously, I'm I wasn't really having a fun time towing with 140 horsepower in a 10,000 pound truck. So, um, again, all of the things that we did, um, everything here was free. We probably added, say, just about 100 horsepower is the estimate. I mean, it could be more, it could be less, but um, it seems to be an average gain of what people are claiming. Um, the fuel plate, we ground that down to a zero plate. Uh, the star wheel, the smoke screw, the pre-boost adjustment, um, and the fuel plate being pushed all the way to the front. So, between all that, a lot more fuel driving it around um, I definitely can keep the smoke down if I hammer on it it'll definitely smoke um, but for my normal day-to-day -day driving it seems to be all right so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to like share subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video take care guys and have a good one